For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch and News Click. For the fifth day today, hundreds and thousands of people of Lebanon are on the streets protesting against the government. The protest began on October 17th after the government introduced a tax on VOIP calls via WhatsApp and Facebook and soon escalated into a larger criticism of the government's economic policies. To talk more about the situation on the ground, the mood of the protesters and the larger reasons for the protest, we have with us Jana Nakhal of the Central Committee of the Lebanese Communist Party. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Kamal. Could you start by first talking about the mood of the ground because Today, the news has come that the Saad Hariri government has approved a series of economic reforms. And these include cutting the salaries of ministers, uh, say reducing expenses for the, on the, uh, from the state. So this has been portrayed as some sort of an effort to address the concerns of the protesters. And today was also the deadline given by Prime Minister Hariri to find a solution, failing which he threatened he would resign. So after this news has come, what is the mood on the streets? Uh, for the past three days, let's say, uh, the, the shouts in the streets have been to actually uh, curse the current uh, uh, Minister of Interior. After the speech, the curses started getting, got directed towards the Prime Minister himself. Uh, because uh, no matter how much, I mean, I don't know what's being said uh, currently in the Western media, but the, cur but the actual speech of the prime minister was to, uh, to actually tell people that all austerity measures will be taken, uh, that the project, that the suggestions of the IMF will be followed, and that the, the, the finite and final uh, 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 privatization of what is left out of the Lebanese government will be taken uh, into, um, uh, will be implemented. So basically, uh, this is what people have seen in the, uh, in the speech of, uh, of the prime minister. Right. And how do you see the next couple of days uh, panning out as far as the protests are concerned? It's a difficult question, uh, but still. It's a very difficult question. Actually, our biggest fears were about today. Everyone was talking about today being a very important day because of many things. First of all, because Hariri was going to and uh, had had uh, announced his uh, his uh, let's say solution solution. Uh, uh, second of all, because of the uh, extent and, and, and grandeur of this movement, I'm talking about uh, yesterday there was 2.5 million people in the streets all over Lebanon in a country of almost 4 million people. Um, so the extent and strength of this movement meant that the political parties in power felt threatened. And we all know that when capital is threatened, it hits hard. And this is what we were afraid of, that they took their, and, and this is what happened. They took their thugs into the streets, all over Beirut, all over the, the, uh, the regions. Uh, people were attacked, uh, uh, people were shot, uh, um, people are threatened everywhere. So this is one thing that happened, and, uh, but people stayed in the streets. And this is what was, uh, what showed, what shows how, uh, how uh, uh, steadfast people are. Uh, we were also afraid of the media. Because uh, we don't, we meaning the left, meaning the uh, Lebanese Communist Party, meaning, you know, everyone who's in the streets don't own the media. Those who own the media are uh, those who have the money. So the media is talking about, you know, uh, what we call Mukharribin, Mundasin, which is uh, uh, something that would be like uh, 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 saboteur who are... Uh, 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 destroying uh, the streets, destroying people's properties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The all of, th these are their arms. These are what they're fighting us with. And until now, people are st the protesters. People are still supporting us. The protesters are still on the streets. There's no fear because actually. It started, fear started to end at the moment where uh, people stopped fearing that these parties would uh, uh, cut, cut their services and uh, uh, stop paying them uh, money. Uh, so this is the this is the, the the most important thing that happened today. Let's see at night. Hopefully the thugs won't come out come out again at night. 
Uh, what is also important is that after the speech of Hariri, uh, people did not uh, buy into the speech. People did not accept it. Uh, several initiatives have been launched to propose what the protesters want, what the demands of the protesters are, and what the, let's say, the plan of the protester is. Uh, um, until now, there's uh, everyone is agreeing upon the idea of a, a resignation of the government. Uh, I think that the coming two days would be a test for the steadfastness of these protesters. If we really want to have a resignation, if we're not going to be afraid of the the threats, the social, political, and economic threats of of the protesters. Yesterday night, they were saying that there are um, uh, immoral things happening in these protests. Uh, knowing that people from all uh, uh, religious and non-religious backgrounds are there, uh, nobody bought into this. So let's see how steadfast we can stay, uh, because we think that they are very much afraid. We're not the ones who are afraid. And uh, to talk a bit more about the protests, the general impression being given in the media is that these are entirely spontaneous, just comprised of a mass of individuals who were just angry. So could you talk a bit about the actual organization that is happening behind these protests? What are the progressive movements, including the Lebanese Communist Party? What is their stand and role in this? Right. So uh, basically, this protest is the result of the protests that started uh, years ago, specifically during 2011, the uh, toppling of the regime protests, then 2014 movements, uh, union movements that uh, during during two years, uh, uh, unions were built around Lebanon and demonstrations and strike took place. Uh, then the 2015, uh, which, which was called the the Trash uh, You Stink movement, and this has been uh, this is said not only by the Communist Party. Everyone is aware of the connection of all of these movements, where people have been, you know, changing and turning. Uh, 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 issues and, and causes from trash into larger uh, socio-political uh, demands. Uh, even now, because if you want to talk about now, the the movements or the protests started because of a uh, proposal by the Minister of Communications to put a, uh, a tax of $6 on the WhatsApp call. This is something, you know, people would laugh about if you think that such a, such a suggestion launched the, the largest movement in the history, in the contemporary history, modern history of Lebanon after the civil war. It is not about communication, the communication minister. It is in, it's not about the $6 bill or tax. This is about the accumulation of uh, demands, of movements, and of awareness, political awareness uh, for the people in Lebanon in general. Uh, so definitely all of the parties and groups and political um, organizers, organizations that were present since 2011, almost until now, but specifically those of 2015, from uh, different leftist movements, uh, uh, secularist movements around Lebanon, and definitely the Communist Party have been, uh, are currently organizing in the streets. So could you, uh, you mentioned some of the uh, enduring resentments that have built up over the last couple of years. So could you, could you give us a bit more background into what the economic situation is and what are these key resentments that are like, broken out right now? Mm -hmm. Uh, the situation, the, the economic situation in Lebanon is, uh, um, is the, the, let's start with talking about the minimum wage, where in a country that, uh, a minimum of $4,000 is needed for uh, a family to live, uh, 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 in, in the city, the minimum wage in Lebanon is almost $300. Uh, the, the, the level of unemployment is almost, uh, I think 50% it was on uh, this year. Uh, uh, the, 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 the level of, uh, poverty has gotten to, to, uh, um, to, to the extent that, uh, people, I mean, let, let's put it this way. People who have been for years, uh, uh supporters and members of the, uh, uh, sectarian uh, political parties are currently 
uh, um, detaching themselves from these polit political parties because of the economic situation. Uh, we're talking unemployment, we're talking housing problems, we're talking services at of all levels. We're talking of a country where there's only one sector working, which is the banking and real estate sector. Uh, so this is what led people to go out to the streets. Right. And a lot of the traditional forces, including Hezbollah, have uh, in some senses expressed their support for the government. There is at some level there has been some sort of a polit it seems like there's been a political unity established with all the parties saying no this government needs to continue. So like you said it's an interesting thing that people have actually despite their traditional support of two various parties have actually come out on the streets and seem to be saying that we are not going to stand for this anymore. I think Marx is laughing now because the alliances are very much class alliances. All the parties, meaning all the sectarian lords, meaning all warmongers, meaning all uh, the uh, uh, all the bourgeoisie are supporting one another. And who are the, the people who are who, uh, the, the members and the groups who are in the streets are representatives of the proletariat, the working class, the disenfranchised women and refugees. So for us, you know, the separation and division is uh, logical and normal. Thank you so much, Jana, for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch and News Click. Yeah,